what is up everyone and welcome to the speed report here on twitch monster 27 it's time to set up for elimination weekend for round three to decide the final four we got a lot to discuss and not a lot of time to do it in so let's get this show on the road we hear that ridiculous tune one more time welcome to the show and we have a lot to talk about as was mentioned road america set us up for what will be the final race of this round round three to set up for the final four i am sam cook your host of the speed report week 12 with us is going to be longtime friend and uh, league racer with me speedy 12 driver as well as our current points leader michael so welcome guys to the boo or to the studio as we break down everything that's getting ready to happen here this weekend so a lot to talk about and let's get uh started with a glance at the points we know that inner caesar was the winner of our race at road america so congratulations to him his first win in brl and his first win of the season a nine chase driver michael you finished second back in black finished third but we'll get in and we'll uh, talk a little bit more about uh what's up with him but uh it was a pretty good race at road america and here are the points at the end of that race Michael leading the points, Ghost Train second. Well, he was third last week. Frosty, Sam Cook tied for third. Little Habibi sitting fifth place on the points grid right now. Big shocker, big turnaround. Before we get into an analysis of what your thoughts were of that race and everything that's happened uh, in that race, how about we take a gander at the race itself? What was that race like? Of course, you know, we enjoy taking a look at the highlights and, you know, we apologize that we don't have the uh, outside broadcast footage, but we've got footage nonetheless and we'll kind of skip through what we got going on as uh, the racing continued or racing uh, took place out there on the racetrack and there is our restart Michael you were first place uh, what was it like for you coming into this race how confident were you um, that you could get it done and, and get the win at this point at that point in the race yeah I thought I had it in the bag I led just about it I did lead every lap pulled on everybody by over 15 30 seconds almost uh, I knew it was one of my strongest tracks and I knew I had the best car yeah speedy you made an observation well, we were just doing a test run but you made an observation what was your observation of that race and your thoughts of that race uh, as you watched it as I was watching it back in the back I saw a lot of um, drivers Working hard, trying to get be as fast as possible, trying to keep everything clean, trying to keep it off each other. That went real hard. I thought it was some good racing in fact. Um, I felt it had been better off for um, a couple more fast drivers to actually go out and fight for the speed more than what it, there was. I thought the restarts were really interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. We will definitely be talking about uh, talking about the restarts for sure. Um, our first caution came out early, and uh, obviously, I, I, I don't know whether you could hear or not. One of the drivers very, very upset. So really quickly, he brought up something that that driver that was was fussing brought up something that is not relevant to. Uh, 
to, to BRL that was more relevant to KMR, and that is when to call cautions. It is up to the drivers to call these cautions. The qualification for a caution is three cars involved or endangerment of the field. That's what makes a caution legal. But the decision whether to call that caution or not is solely up to the driver. The only time it is outside of the driver's hands is within DNFs. If there's a DNF, it that's automatically going to throw the caution. Um, so anyway, this was a big track. And so pacing around this track seemed to take forever in a day. But hey, we got some good footage of the car. The eight car ran twitch. Let's take it through middle pack middle of the race here we had a long, a long stretch of green flag run and this was around the time that i met up with uh back in black in the nine and had an excellent excellent battle with him uh considering the nature of our uh on track relationship for lack of a better term but it was really really clean we went back and forth we did rub rub some paint off the sides of the cars but that was fine as we battle for these crucial positions, I did not know how crucial this position was going to be uh, until it happened, uh, until I saw the points. But Michael, you were leading this race at the time, 38 seconds, man. How did you feel? What was running through your head when the caution flag came out and, and, and bunched us all together and sent us into overtime? I knew something was gonna go wrong. Just with the way it turn one is, uh, I guess, built, it being a sharp right hand on a runoff, easy to send, easy to miss. And and all of the restarts that we were having um, kind of made things difficult as well, uh, for sure. Let's take you to the one of those restarts for sure. This was a late race caution here. And so here we come up the hill, uh, getting ready to make this restart. Now, I believe you pitted, correct? No, you're still in the lead. Okay, you're still in the lead, and you've got Inner Caesar beside you. you got Back in Black right there, Ghost Train right there. Um, as you can see, there was only 30 laps, I believe, at Road America. So... We're coming down to crunch time here. Yeah, and this is when Ghost loses control of his car and is unable to control it. Lap 28. This was going to uh, send us into overtime here, Dale. Excited to get that lap back. All right, so let's take it. Take a look at this overtime run right here and double file. Okay, so Michael, you're sitting uh, right side to enter Caesar. We're coming into overtime. Um, if we could do anything differently, what would you do coming? through these last couple laps to, to, to try and secure the win. Block, black, back and black on the restart. Or at least tell Caesar to. On that last restart, he let us go three wide and put me on the outside of it. Of turn one, three wide, never gonna work. Especially not here at Road America, how narrow everything is. Right here, uh, Black didn't really jump that last start, um, but he did put you guys in very precarious situations, um, and so did I, but hey, I was going for all I knew right here. This was, this was me going for everything, going for all the marbles here. Had a strong car all day, and, uh. Did we have we had one more caution after this, right? Yep. Okay, so this isn't the final restart. Yeah, okay, so there's the caution. Uh, 
There's the caution. All right, so final restart of the race right here. Uh, we are coming up the hill. Green flag, back in black, clearly jumps, illegal restart for him. And he receives a points penalty. In the meantime, he jumps all the way from fourth to or where will he reach our fourth or fifth all the way up uh, and so and you can hear me trying to explain that rule obviously in first person you can't really judge a whole lot but I went back and look at the footage of this replay or of the restarts from his camera angle on his channel because he did stream and so I want to come out while we're looking at this and say a formal apology to everyone in BRL and everyone that, that uh, has been following the rules as far as restarts are concerned and everything. Um, what I was telling you was correct um, as far as when you can go, when the leaders can go, etc. But and when it applied to Back in Black, it was clearly, clearly uh he, he broke the rules there, and so I definitely want to apologize to that. <laughs> and so Enter Caesar is pulling away at this point. Michael, where were you around this point? You were marred in traffic, right? I was what? Marred in traffic. You were stuck in traffic. Oh, yeah. I was, I think I was around six. Uh, I was behind the voice, who's behind the ghost. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, whenever you had just passed right, him. Yeah, whenever you turned right, coming down to turn three, we were three wide, me, you, and back in black. So whenever you turned right to pinch black, pinched me off the track. Oops. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Um, then, uh, go ahead. Then everybody missed turn three. I'm on the very outside, just getting plowed into. And for you to be able to battle back from that, you had a lot of speed and power in that car. It was evident because of how you ran. You just couldn't catch that 42. Wasn't enough time. Right. All right, so we're on our white flag lap. As you can see, Inner Caesar is gone right now. Back in black can do nothing to get this get this win, which is very very significant because uh, of where he is in points, where he was in points coming into this race. Definitely in a must win situation, and I think he expected uh, some compensation. Um, to be able to steal this win and he just it didn't come he did not get it not only did he not get it but lost the position in the process so coming through the final corner look enter Caesar 3.6 3.7 seconds in two laps Michael running away with this enter Caesar is going to win this race and uh, and you can hear the clamor as Inner Caesar gets it done out there on the racetrack. All right, so at the end of that run, we see this points outcome again. Now let's take a moment to talk about kind of some big things with the uh, with the race here. Uh, at the end of the race. So first of all, we see Ghost Train able to jump a position up and now is sits there in the, in the second position. Uh, so Speedy, what do you think about Ghost as far as this season? What are your expectations? Is Ghost meeting his expectations for the season? Or what do you think about Ghost? It seems like this year, this season, he's been slacking a little bit um, on finishing and getting it done at the end. Um, he's been running good, running strong. It just seems like he's been lacking on um, 
several tracks near the end and making more mistakes than what he used to. Yeah, Michael, what are your thoughts about Ghost? Obviously, this is your rookie season running with him. Um, how do you, are you game planning for the 84, our defending champion? Any concerns there? Planning to try and drive away from him. <laughs> uh, respect him as a driver, respect him as a person. But I just want to drive away from everybody and actually win Coda this week. That's a good way to cap off a good round for you, Michael, and, and uh, so far a good season. So uh, that's first and foremost with Ghost. Um, so are we seeing, do, we, do you think that we're seeing all we're going to see from Ghost as far as his abilities on the racetrack preparing for the final round? Or do you think that Ghost can take another step and uh, that we haven't seen to this point? Is he just waiting to get to that final four and then is going to step up then? Something's going to come out in the final four. It's going to be probably just a lot more practice, a lot more time put in out of him. But he really wants this. It's like everybody else here. Yeah, I definitely feel like um, Ghost is biding his time. Just me personally, I think the uh, Final Four, uh, we're going to see how bad he wants the championship. And, you know, he's he won it last season. How bad does he want the championship this season? Um, Speedy, do you think that he's going to yield? Do you think there could be where he yields for Habibi? to try and get Habibi um, a championship this season? Uh, it depends on how hungry he is. He's won the, he's won the championship before, so, and Habibi hasn't. So if he's hungry enough, he'll go for it himself. But if he can't get himself in the position to do that, I, I'm sure we could possibly see him um, just go ahead and do what he can to try to help Habibi go out there and get it done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we're going to a track. I think we're going to see a lot. We're going to a track where Habibi has won this race. He was pretty dominant and leading and then being able to come through the field. Um, though there were some mistakes here and there. We'll see how hungry Ghost Train is on the track. I think, I think starting this week. But definitely at Daytona, we'll see um, how, how hungry Ghost is to defend that title. As you see on your screen, he's sitting second, comfortably in second place right now. So, will he have that same edge and drive as if he were sitting third or fourth on the crust of elimination, especially considering he has no win in this round. So, he's going to have to point in if he doesn't win. So, now let's talk about the next in line when you look at third, uh, uh, third and fourth on the grid, Frosty, Sam Cook, tied in points. Who's your favorite uh, between these two? Who's your favorite to advance, Speedy? Uh, I'd be happy to see you advance to the final four. And uh, Habibi wouldn't be a bad one to advance either. Y'all yeah, both had strong seasons, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't put past both of y'all trying to making it in. All right, Michael. Now it's kind, kind of, kind of, uh, I wouldn't say biased, but strategically for you as a driver, obviously you want to try to get the best path to the championship. So who's your favorite? to go and and get that done. Frosty or Sam Cook in the eight? Uh, if I want the easy route, he can say it, probably Sam. Based on who I think is actually going to get it done, probably still Sam. 
Frosty makes too many mistakes. He has a lot of DNF this season. And I feel like it might come to bite him here in the SCTs. All right, yeah, I'm obviously uh, not going to comment on this portion because I'm not going to sit here and talk about myself. Everyone obviously knows as a competitor and a racer, I'm going to pick myself. I think we have a good shot at Coda. That's neither here or there. Um, so then, obviously, um, Speedy, you said that your favorite was me to get in. So then... The underdog, your underdog pick would have to be Frosty. Why Frosty? What do you see that makes him your underdog? He's been showing um, good speed every weekend and week out. Yeah, he's been struggling here and there, but he's been showing good speed. So I think he, he might be able to pull it off in these final four. Okay. Underdog still optimism. Um... Michael, I'm so scared to ask this. You pick Frosty as your favorite, even though he has mistakes that he's made throughout the season. So what makes Sam Cook your underdog? It's really just comes to lack of that long run pace. He gets off the track sometimes. He, I guess he gets in his head a little bit. It seems like you have a lot of mental errors or just time so it seems like you're not 100 percent yeah uh, i i will agree to that because i'd be tired y'all don't understand but anyway <laughs> so yeah a lot of mental errors when you got a three-year-old running around at 11 30 at night yes you're right uh anyway yeah so definitely okay okay right so who do you think is under more pressure between Frosty and Sam Cook, obviously tied in points. They got Habibi sniffing up their tailpipes. Who's under more pressure coming into Coda? Is Habibi an, an answer, or is it just Sam Cook? And uh, ju just between us, us, Sam Cook and, and uh, Frosty. Hmm. I don't know. That one's kind of a tough question. They both really need to get in this race the size of their season and I need them both to be a baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right well um, so Michael doesn't know speedy what do you think who's your who's your uh, favorite or who's under I'm sorry who's under more pressure do you think at road at going in Dakota, I would say both. I'd say both of you because you guys got also one more person right on your tail trying to get you in point. So, y'all both can't afford to make any mistake or get a DNF. Y'all gotta go out and perform and try to advance. Right for a good race, hope for a good finish. Hope that your competitor behind you doesn't better than you right but who's under more pressure yeah we're under pressure but who's got it the most and the reason why i pose that question is because uh, for frosty last season wasn't uh the best for him and uh he ended up in the booth um by the end of that season uh, but this season has been a significant turnaround on the other hand for sam cook um he's been to the final four and the first two seasons uh now he's on the crust of making a final four again so that experience of been here done that could that play a factor in the amount of pressure he feels or lack thereof headed into a track that he didn't do half bad at that previous the uh, last season uh, running it either uh it's really a hard question i mean both, both of y'all have your strengths, both of you have your weaknesses. It's just going to come down to who can execute. Who, who can keep the pressure. I mean, I think you have an advantage because you've been doing this so long. You can keep the nerves down probably a whole lot better than he can. And knowing it's a race-to-race -race situation, this is either you, you, get, you make it or you don't.
Michael, your thoughts? On which part exactly? It was more pressure? Yeah. Um, like what Speedy said, you have, you both have strengths, weaknesses, but with your factor of, like you said, you've been in the Final Four, you know, we're just like to have to make it with all the pressure on you. And then Frosty is really needing to come up, coming up short. He doesn't want to do it again. I think Frosty has that slight edge of pressure on him. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't it? Get out there on the racetrack and see how we do. And uh, that's going to be the key there. As you see on your screen, obviously, last season's uh, footage of last season's Cobra race. And the man to beat right there, that 48. Let's talk about him just a little bit. Uh, is Habibi in danger uh, right now? Uh, how confident are you that he can get into that final four spot? And the reason why we ask that question is obviously he doesn't have a win for the round um which plays a big factor and of course last week he was supposed to have a sub but that sub left him short did not show up which means he got zero points for that race which was key any points would have been better than nothing and he goes from sitting second place in the point standings to sitting outside of the top four uh, and with no win, needing to go to Coda and either point his way in with a good finish or win. So, is he in any danger this season, Speedy, of uh, possibly missing the show? Absolutely. You, you always want to, even, even if you can't make a race, you always want to have. Oh, yeah. So, a decent sub, that way at least you get something. And if you ain't got that, you're putting yourself in a more bind than anything, and then you're risking not being able to be there at all. So you want to make sure you, you're able to show up this time, because now you got yourself in a bind if your sub didn't show up last time. You don't need to make that mistake again and then not be able to do anything. So true. Uh, Michael, you have had plenty of battles with Habibi up front in races. And with the expectation that you'll have yet another battle with him at Coda, um, do you think that he's in any danger? Or do you think that he has enough skill and ability to be able to be safe enough to say, okay, well, I didn't have a sub, and I rightfully, in my opinion, gave this win uh, to someone who's deserving of it, uh, but I'll be fine headed into Coda. I think he can do that. I think he he won here last season. He has the confidence that he can do it again, proving that he can. Uh, I don't remember what you said it was, but you said there was a certain position he needed to be in, beat you guys by, to point in. Um. Yeah. So if we um if we pull our points back up here. We can see that that transition there, and it's uh, Habibi is eight points out, with every position being three points. Um, he would need to finish about three positions ahead of uh, of us, uh, one of us, both of us, essentially, uh, in order to kind of gain that. And of course, he's going to need help, bonus points. And things of that nature everything helps make a difference there in being able to uh, secure a uh, victory he's outside of that zone where he can get team points so that's not an option for him uh, or any of those drivers above him so essentially it's going to go down to what they do on the racetrack but that's definitely something that um, they can well and, and looking at Habibi like um, I like you said Michael I think he has plenty enough confidence that to go out there and say you know what look I'm Habibi I'm gonna go out here and I'm going to be up front battling for this race now there's all, like Speedy said there's always a chance and I think you do there is a measure of risk 
with what Habibi has done and what's going on with him. Because as you just, uh, well, you didn't just see it on your screen, but um, that the S's, that transition part of um, of the of the racetrack coming into that left hand turn on the West Circuit last season when this race race was won or, or when this race was ran uh, there were a few drivers that hit that tire barrier and one driver did receive fatal damage and even Habibi lost it on the tire barrier um, so you're rolling the dice going out there that someone else could make a mistake something stupid could happen and and then of course you're taken out of the race and of course then that'll be your season let's just go down that road let's just say that something stupid happens and he's unable to finish this race would it be um how big of a how big of a failure would this season be for habibi if he couldn't get it done and uh hold on one second let's see if we can get Speedy to mute his mic one second. Just for a minute. Speedy! 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 Big. Speedy! There it is. All right, all right. Uh, In short terms, I think Kevin Harvick 2020. Tons of winds coming into the playoffs. Slowed down a little bit as the rounds progressed. And then boom, nothing. He's out of the playoffs. What happened? Yeah. You know, um, with the with the dominance, the sheer dominance that Habibi has had, you know, uh, up to this point, I really do believe that it would be a situation where we could really see a lot of frustration out of Habibi. I could see Habibi not showing up to the rest of the races, just out of the frustration, because this will be back to back seasons now where, if this were to happen, where he would have a dominant season, a season where he's won a lot of races, um, and then go and not be able to secure a championship down the stretch. So it's really important that he goes out here, executes, stays out of trouble, stays away from uh, any situations that could put him in a bad light or in a bad uh, risky situation, play it real safe. And be aware of the competition that's around him to see how hard he needs to push to be able to secure a uh, win but, or, or a good position. So, having said all of that and knowing where he is in points, how aggressive do you think Habibi is going to be coming into Saturday? I think for the first half or so, he's just going to run his race, not worry about it. But then it's going to hit that point where he realizes, oh, I need to go. And my season's about over. He's really going to put it down. And he's going to be making moves that you're not ready for. Yeah. And, you know, it's understandable. Being in that position is completely understandable because he's fighting for a season. He's fighting for a championship, something he's not been able to secure despite early success so uh here's to habibi especially if he loses it this way um you know really had he had a sub or just somebody to come in and dnf or come in and lag out would have been better than nothing and he was unable to secure that so uh that's unfortunate for him okay so Let's talk about the must-win drivers. You're going to see them on your screen uh, once again. And these must-win drivers consist of Dale Jr., uh, Beloved Car, and 
back in black. Um, out of these must-win drivers, who are you the most confident in uh, that they can get it done? Uh, back to black. He has the aggression needed. Doesn't necessarily yeah, have Lord. The Lord, he has the aggression. We know that. Oof. Everybody learns it at some point in time. Uh, he has a little bit of the pace, definitely pace around like top five ish. But he has the aggression needed to make any moves on anybody if he gets to. Them. Yeah, I'm, I, I will definitely second that motion. Um, I, I tell you that that aggression, though, I mean, that aggression is real. And he definitely has the uh, ability. The question I always have of him is, well, does he have the focus? Will be will he be able to focus for 50 laps and be able to hold it together enough to secure a victory? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear, but welcome back. Yeah, will will he? He got 50 laps. He's gonna have to hold it together for 50 laps, and so that's that's gonna be a big deal. Um, and so. Speedy, I'm going to ask you pretty much the same question. Um, for the drivers that are the drivers outside, the ones that are in the must-win situations, um, the must-wins group consisting of beloved Dale Jr. and Back in Black, who are you most confident in that they can get it done? Uh, I'd have to say Back in Black. He's always shown speed. He's always been able to try to race up front. He's just got to keep his composure and not make the mistakes he always makes. Yeah, that's that's what we were talking about. Michael said that, and I said the same thing. It's got to be. Um, he's got to be able to stay away from um, those mistakes that he's that he makes that he those traps that he falls into every race and you know you think about how different things may have been for him had he just had his head in the game at road america um so we will see and you know what he decides or what he's able to do coming into that race the cards are stacked against him but um we can't say enough about the other two drivers, Dale, um, beloved, but um, when you put everything in perspective, especially coming into this track, um, Dale's first time here, beloved second, uh, we'll have to see exactly what they're able to do and what they're able to accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. It's nothing against them. It's just, they're still learning, still, still growing in their racing, and well, they might surprise us. Who knows? I mean, I would, I'd be okay with it, with the surprise, but I think, I think they still got some time before they get back. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so that same group, talking about that same group, who would you be most disappointed in for not making? take a look at the overall season of a driver I take a look at Dale Jr I would be the most disappointed because Dale didn't have to be in this position that he's in right now 
He didn't have to be in a must win. Um, but down the stretch of this series of races, especially, um, he had an opportunity. He had several opportunities um, to make it happen on the racetrack. And he made some very, very costly mistakes that sent him to the garage early. And as a result, um, kind of put a damper in and put him in this position where now he's got to do what some may feel is the impossible. Go out there and win a race with everyone that we've already talked about. Ghost Train, Frosty, Sam Cooke, Habibi, uh, Michael. Um, and we haven't even started talking about the drivers outside of the top eight that have the ability to win this race, like Wes or Inner Caesar. Um, what speed comes out of some of these guys, like Zero, um, I mean, we, we haven't talked about that. And he didn't have to be in this position. So that's kind of the frustrating part out of all of this. Uh, so that's my pick. Uh, Michael, what about you? Most disappointing? Yeah, if, um, if they're un unable to make it, would you be most disappointed in? So, and not, not just in terms of this race, but just to cap off the whole season for them. Probably still back black. I mean, he talks a lot of his he spits. He talks trash in the party. And he hasn't done a lot to back it up this season. I don't know if it's just irony or you know, a little bit of disappointment. Yeah, he's, he's got to be able to go out there and focus. So, uh, When you talk a trash, though, a lot of trash, you draw a lot of attention to yourself. As a result, people will definitely race you different. And that's a concept he has, hasn't quite understood yet. All right, so to kind of sum all of this up, Michael, what are your CODA expectations as far as what the racing is going to be like uh, and expectations for for your yourself and the drivers around you? It's going to be... I'm definitely going to be one that's cautious this race. I don't want to DNF and ruin this round. I'm really scared of that corner after the S's raced here before. Hit that tire barrier almost every lap. Thanks. So. Got you. Speedy. Am I prepared? How are you prepared? Oh, how am I? Uh, putting the monster on. Just run after run after run. No on the tires. Then we go again. So you're doing a whole lot of practice. Yeah. Good. Are you prepared? And what do you think the turnout will be for you? And what will you Sorry? be happy with? What What will do you think the turnout for you will be this weekend? And if you're not, if you don't, if you're not able to win it, what would you be happy with other than that? I'm not satisfied without a win. I want that redemption for Road America. I still feel bad about Indy Road Course. I feel like I had that race one in the last corner. But I want to win here to go into the Final Four with tons of momentum. And I don't want to settle for anything else. All right, so you heard that, Speedy. He wants the dub. Nothing else matters. And it's that kind of drive and intensity that makes for a champion. Um, so we'll see what he's able to accomplish. Yeah, Speedy, as a spectator, um, what do you think? What are your expectations of the Coda experience this upcoming season? Or this upcoming season? Wow, this upcoming this upcoming weekend. I'm hoping to see good battles. Good racing. A little bit of door to door action against the bump trucks there. But I'm looking for some, some good clean racing and uh, great battles all the way to the end. That's my focus. I'm not going 
not be upset with uh, upset uh, not getting playoff driver going out. Got you. You know, I, I well, you know one thing we've never had in BRL to this point. We have never had a photo finish. Um, we've never had a photo finish. I'd love to have a photo finish between two chase drivers to to cap off uh, this this round of racing, which I think has been excellent. Um, it, it's been an excellent round. Overall, I think as far as the quality of racing, it hadn't been a wreck fest. Uh, we've had long green flag runs. As far as Coda, my expectation, however, is for that trend to end just a little bit, especially early in a race. i tell you the reason why. You've got a lot of storylines that have gotten to play out. Um, you got Habibi. I think if, if Habibi, well, obviously Habibi's going to start on pole. Um, and so with that being said, because it's, oh, I'm sorry, no, he's not. He, uh, we're talking exact points order. So Michael, you'll be on pole. But I think if Michael can get up, or if Habibi can get up front quickly, um, I think that's one thing that will play itself out. And he'll stay up front for to battle with you and Ghost and, and uh, whoever else for most of the race. I will also say this, though. Um, the nine car, I'm expecting to be very aggressive. Turn one is on a restart is murder. Um, you can go five, six, seven wide if you wanted to, and expect BRL drivers to go five, six, seven wide. It's probably going to happen. Uh, you got drivers in the dirt. You got drivers on the grass on the other side. It's going to be mayhem. Um, I can tell you from experience. That being said. Um, I think that the nine car being aggressive is definitely going to be responsible for a few cautions. I think that those some of those corners, the S's coming down that hill, um, are going to be responsible for some DNFs. Um, and then you've got these nine playoff drivers who are out here who are battling for team points position, who are battling for wins to start up front at Daytona. They're battling for uh, to help drive their, their teammates that may be in a chase. Um, there's a lot going on, and I think that means they're going to want to fight harder and, and race harder. So I think it's going to be racing all over the track. I don't think it's going to be the cleanest race in the world. My expectation is to have about five or six cautions in this race. Um, but I just hope we don't go into overtime in this race. I just hope we don't have an overtime finish. I vote no for overtime. But this is a glimpse into what we can expect on the racetrack. Obviously, this was broadcasted by uh, my brother, Zal Factor. Um, and I think he did a good job of broadcasting and getting the angles on this track and what drivers were doing. Obviously, we see uh, certain drivers making certain moves, but this is kind of the kind of racing we can expect. And imagine this style of racing with all chase drivers. Uh, it's going to be very, very, very competitive on the track. Okay. Um. Let's see. Three top five, uh, top three finishers. Michael, who you got? Caesar, no, me, Caesar, and Ghost. All right, and the reason why he says Caesar, just as a quick update, Inner Caesar will uh, be in the car for Back in Black as a sub. Is that still correct, or was he just blowing some hot air? As far as I know, it is still suspended. Okay, so. All right, so um, Inner Caesar will be in the nine. So essentially, back in black, getting that third place finish uh, won't be enough to get him through to the next round, but certainly be enough to com potentially to change the complexity of this entire run, and this entire race. All right, so Speedy, top three finishes. Who you got? Alright, 
not surprised no one's picking Habibi. Wow. Well, here's who I got. Ghost Train. I think Ghost Train. Um, I think Habibi 1-2. That gets Habibi in. And then I'm going to say uh, Michael. I think that's going to kind of be, I think it's going to be a default layout as far as how the finishes have been in the past. I think it's how it's going to be this time around. And uh, so here's, here's, last time I made a prediction, it ended up right. So it's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. Same, I've got a scenario for you. All right, let's play the scenario out. I'm ready. So no, wait, 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 wait. Does it involve math? Because it's 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 twelve thirty my time, so I'm probably not gonna be able to do any math with any accuracy. It. I don't think it involves math. Depends on if you want to do it or not. Okay. All right. So with Dubai being out when absolute breakfast ended up with not so many drivers finishing. Gotcha. What if? You and Frosty finish that race. Habibi doesn't show up to Road America anyways. And now he's even more points down. Would he be in the must win, do you think? He's doing math. Yeah. Um... If you, you're saying if Habibi DNF'd uh, Dubai. No, I'm just saying if you and Frosty if he, both if, finish the race. If we both finish the race. Um, no. I think the points would be... I think the points would be... No, it would probably be must win because Habibi... Assuming that Habibi would not have had a sub and missed that race... And then we would have had back-to-back -back races where we finished. Yeah, and I actually even think that we finish above Ghost Train. Um, I think what we would we would be um, sitting second, third instead of third, fourth. Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, be way more dramatic race. For sure, um, because then for four eight four. In order to get both their cars in, one would have to win, and the other one would have to make up all those points, which means they'd have to have help. And Habibi is going to have to have a little bit of help. Uh, he's going to have to go in there and hope that, you know, he can he can gap me and Frosty, um, or else it's going to be one of those one point or get up front, lead the most lap, you know, bonus point his way in. Hope that we don't lead a lap. He leads a lap, leads the most laps something like that and then gaps us by two three positions then uh and and this is not to say he's not entirely capable of that it's just saying that there are a lot of odds that that are gonna have to go in there you just don't know the the fact of all of the factors racing factors you just don't know till you get out there and you're like oh no you know, Woozy Emu is wrecked in front of the, the, the hit the tire barrier and spazzes out in front of me, and now I'm DNF. You know, what I mean, it's just, stuff happens. It does. Stuff happens. So, and not to pick on Woozy, but you know, stuff happens. Oh no, Habib. Uh, you know, Bibbly Bob is strolled in the middle of the track. You know, kind of, kind of thing. Because it happens. I'm here to tell you. At least one person is gonna spin in those S's, and not say a word, and just get plowed into. Yeah, it's gonna happen. You know it. Um, in that race that was being shown, we didn't get footage of it. I'm so I'm so uh, upset about that. There was a driver who hit the tire barrier coming through those S's, hit the tire barrier, and went airborne, and like one or two people drove up under his car before he landed and it was epic but we didn't get it on uh, didn't get it on the camera but it was an epic epic wreck I think it was like our first caution first or second caution that came out was was that wreck pretty awesome stuff pretty awesome stuff 
Yeah. Okay, so here's a uh, off the grid question for you guys. Um, what effect do you think the non playoff drivers are going to have at Coda? Um, obviously, it's an exact points starting grid, so all of the top eight will start in the first eight positions. But what effect do you think the, the other guys are going to have in, in the uh, in the race? Uh, somebody's going to get really aggressive, like, oh, i got to prove myself going into next season if I'm not in the top 16. Oh, i got to do this and that. Die bomb, make somebody mad, probably cause a wreck. It's not gonna be pretty. Yeah, could be. Could be. We'll, we'll have to see. I think. I think that's. I think as a as a as a chaser I think one of the goals you have to have coming into that race is do not fall outside of the top eight and into that group at all costs stay within the group of drivers that you're battling because if you go inside of that that group then you get what you got you know they're they're battling and fighting too so you know you get what you get in that situation I guess so We'll see. We will see. Uh, speaking of which, check the channel out right here. Uh, I should have a broadcaster. I'm gonna check with uh, check with someone who's gonna broadcast for me last week. See if they'll do it for me this weekend. Um, 11:30 Eastern. We'll be going green flag racing for our elimination race at Coda the West Circuit tune in uh, so that you can catch that great race it's gonna be an awesome race I uh, want to thank Speedy for taking the time while he's working I'm sure you heard him um, working driving that truck stay safe out there man thanks for joining us and keeping tabs of the of the, of the series and how things are going barely here now but that's okay we're at the end of the stream and Michael uh, thanks for coming up here and uh, keeping things uh, neutral and as as, as uh, neutral as possible uh, obviously as a competitor and talking about some drivers who you've had run-ins with on the track sometimes it can be difficult but I appreciate that I'm, I'm just assuming because sometimes it's difficult for me but I try to keep things neutral and uh, we will see what happens on the racetrack. Michael, I wish you the best in that race. And Thanks, you, too. you can check us out on social media. That's right here on your screen right now. Uh, check us out if you haven't already. Stream Monster 27. Hit that subscribe button and those notifications so you'll know when videos go live. This is Sam Cook and Twitch Monster. See you Saturday.